guys welcome back to the channel chris here in today's video i'm going to be diving through some of my favorite piano plugins for 2023 let's go all right so i'd just like to quickly start off by saying it's been a little minute since i've actually posted the video life has been very busy which is great but not great for you guys because then it means that i'm being delayed on my videos but either way i'd just like to say a quick thank you to the people that left a comment on the last video i did on the roads plugins if you haven't seen it you can check it out up here There's some great comments on there and thank you so much for stating plugins and software i might have missed out i'll be really curious to check those out so thanks again for anyone who's stopped by and, and commented on that but basically today oh i thought something was missing but yeah, so today we're going to be checking out some of my favorite piano plugins in particular. I really want to start off with this one called Hammers and Waves. Beautiful plugin. GUI is awesome. Sounds amazing. It's probably my most used piano sound. I, I just think it sounds really good. Something special about this library is that the piano was sampled with a machine that plays every velocity, you know, really slow, really hard and kind of everywhere in between so it's allowed them to get a really accurate sample of both of these pianos they've got this modern grand and then this upright we'll dive into both of them there's a lot of examples so i want to try to do as little talking as possible and a lot more playing so let's just start off there let's get a bit of playing going this is the default for the modern grand very lovely very in your face just great piano sound but the thing for me that separates this a little is that you can see you've got a couple of options here to change and actually if you go into the source dives way deeper into things you can do with this and this is reflected on the other one they both kind of have the same uh, gui for this so what i really enjoy about this one is the shift mode and this kind of gives you a variety of pianos from bright to dark anywhere in between I've actually set up an instrument on Ableton which allows me, I basically just made some macros to control these things, so I've just got it right here if I want to make any changes, and that's really cool, you've got one example right there, it's really bright. Or my personal favorite, the complete opposite end. Beautiful. So you've got this really dark, kind of nice, mysterious piano sound. But obviously you've got these other controls. So you've got Swarm, Fractals, and the Mod. I believe you also have Reverb on the Mod Wheel. But the Mod in itself basically gives you a bit of a chorus effect. So if I put this source back to the middle. So this is the Mod. Hear a little bit of warbly goodness going on. If I turn that off. Back on. But then you've got these fractals and the swarm, which kind of makes this a little bit unique. It's quite a nice effect. So first we've got the swarm. Sounds like this. And what's really nice is you can even just turn off the source. So if I pull this down, shoop, all the way down. Really nice. You've got that effect. You can do whatever you want with it, which is very nice. Lastly, we've got these fractals, which is kind of like an arpeggiation thing. Thank you. 
that's nice. It can be a little bit disorienting, but what's nice is you can go into fractals and actually change up what is going on in here. Got the, the source. will animate basically the fractals that you're hearing. So if I pull down the source, we can just hear what's going on with the fractals. So this will animate the color and the shift amount. You can see it animating there. And then I can change the, uh, the rate of the arpeggiation. Get the source back on. Pull that color a bit down and the source shift down. Add a bit of reverb. And so that is your fractals as well as your first hammers and waves piano. I'm just going to unsolo that, mute the main piano. Now we've got the upright. Really nice. You can totally hear that upright character. Sounds super. I don't know, very warm, very close to my heart. Most people probably practicing the piano grew up on an upright. So at least for me, it's a, it's a way more familiar feeling when I'm playing a piano sound. But again, you have all of these controls. So I've got the, what is the swarm? Okay, I've got the fractals. I can have both of them at the same time. Beautiful. So we've got those, we've got our mod. Really nice. And then last but not least, we've got our source, which again is my favorite part of this. that all the way to the bottom and Ooh, super inspiring stuff all the way down there all the way at the top a bit more clavichord kind of vibe like a bit more of a harpsichord but you know you could layer it with something and there's a lot of possibilities for me again most of the use i get out of this is just having it as a normal piano i put it slightly on the darker side lovely then you have all of these things on the side this pre-strike but it adds some offset and all of these kind of little extra things you can go into. I don't want to stay faffing about with this too much because I'm going to get lost in all of the exciting features that we've got. So moving on, again, uh, Hammers and Waves is my, my personal fave. But next up, we got the next head of the key sounds, Keyscape. Here we've got the upright again, but let's take it back to the LA Custom. This is just the default grand piano sound when you open up Keyscape. Mm -hmm. 
So, as you can tell, very nice, very warm selling, very thick, thick. <laughs> it's got all of that, all of that heft in there. Really nice. Where I find Keyscape is really valuable, even though you've only got three acoustic sounds there obviously you've got plenty of presets where you can really dive in and get some very inspiring sounds like considering this is just stock and dry which is fine does the job for most things but if i want something a bit more airy i can go into cinematic go very nice again same same but different just a lot more reverb or maybe i want something quite uh different i could go dark score So we can tell we've got we've got a lot of variations. Some of this is even just how sensitive the the attack of the piano feels. For example, there's one which is club. Nice upfront attacky sound. You even have <laughs> unreal smash. Very compressed, kind of like that. Uh, There you go, I'm sure you can recognize that one. Stepping away from the grand, we've obviously got some uprights, which are very nice. You can hear all the hammer noise and stuff like that, which is very good, but you've got your performance controls there if you want to get rid. Again, one of my favorite features is the color shift which allows you to get that similar effect from Hammers and Waves. So you've got that. Lovely. Where this gets a bit interesting is you've got this wing tack piano. This has little tacks, almost like pins, stuck to the hammers, which gives you this... This metallic transient. And that's just kind of the one hit, the one transient when you hit the note. But then you've got some like this tremolo. You can hear it continue to bounce off. Or in this case, the slow tremolo. Awesome. So, again, really nice piano sounds. Again, if I'm using this, my favorite stop will probably be the wing upright. Um, usually the dark indie or the lonely basement. The lonely basement's quite nice. Pull back that reverb. Awesome. Obviously, the context of where you use these pianos is quite important. I find, for example, this, this LA Custom one is as lovely as it sounds. takes up a lot of real estate on the frequency spectrum, you know? So when you're working on a song and you're like, oh, it could add some piano, and then you get this big, 
like even just playing down there in the context of a mix i find i have to be a bit specific of either the sound i'm choosing how i can tweak it slightly to really poke out in the mix or to you know be hidden in the mix and yeah so i guess it's quite nice that they've got some variations it really allows you to pick one that you're happy with and then you can even tweak it a bit further with some eq compression all that stuff again keyscape fantastic i really rave about it great great keyboard next let's move on to labs this again personal favorite of mine the beauty of labs is everything i'm about to show you is free which is great we all love free i personally love free keyscape hammers and waves and all that stuff not free but moving on to this i'll show you some great examples because i feel like the stuff that you can get in spitfire labs which is this program right here is very awesome let's start with their oldest piano because that's probably my most used one the soft piano <laughs> A little bit quiet, I'll just turn it up slightly. Sounds awesome. You don't have too many controls, you just have basically reverb. These are kind of like dynamics. You've got you've got them mapped. Oh. Very much dynamics, but you've got them uh, mapped to yeah, CC11 and CC1. So if you're using any MIDI controllers, you can you can obviously use these and, and this, I believe, CC19. So you've got that. Fantastic. Let's quickly jump into the next, which again, for me in Spitfire Labs, my favorite go-to piano as of now, because the soft one is great, but I find again, it kind of is a bit hidden in songs when you're working on it. It's really lovely on its own if you were doing like a vocal piano kind of production. But usually when things are a bit more dense in the mix, having something like this, the autograph grand. Oh, so warm, so nice, so present. and again so all of this i'm just touching on the pianos but there is plenty of instruments you can get in here all for free all really high quality i would honestly recommend if you haven't checked out spitfire labs you could do that now those are the two most um, normal sounding, let me say that, from labs, because then you, you tend to get a lot of these very creative sounds that have been made using the samples that they would have recorded originally. For example, we've got these tape pianos, which again, very nice. Now you can hear they got a bit of that warbliness. just get more and more extreme if I go on to what's this so if you're into all of that cool stuff got some options last but not least on here we've got the glass piano I'm just going to show you the main one because again really lovely grand piano just you know hits the spot again you've got three really awesome pianos i'll show you one of the the funky ones in this glass piano anthem for example it's 
So you've got some really nice variations. I would very much check that out. You've got thousands of sounds to play from, and it's going to be really, really fun to dive in. Next on the list, we've got Analog Lab. I, I should state, it's not actually Analog Lab. I had started there, but then I dove straight into the piano plugin because this is... Um, where they all live so it makes more sense for me to be checking this out but i had started an analog lab because you've got plenty of sounds to dive into all shuffled which i really like you can just sift through all the stuff but starting us off i'm going to start on this preset called dr crucial because when i was going through analog lab looking through the piano sounds this was one i had landed on that was like oh this is actually quite lush <laughs> nice is that i don't really use the arturia piano too much because i feel like i have enough sources to pull from that i'm always reaching for other stuff but this has a lovely collection of sounds and some really you know easy terminology which i quite like brightness kind of like a filter but you know everything there got my dynamics Full dynamics. So if I pull that all the way back, I'm gonna get maximum dynamics. Usually I like to keep that a bit less. some width Can make it almost mono or very stereo dynamics that's like i would probably pull that back myself but uh, again something you can opt into your workflow to help with dynamics is using some form of velocity control this is usually just midi information as opposed to an actual thing to do with the sound for example for me i don't know how well you can see this but i've got a global button and here i've got a velocity curve and i can turn it down to low or to high, or to fixed, so I'm just full velocity, or I can turn it down really low to say uh, the 20. Very quiet obviously, but at least keeps you on that velocity. I like to keep this on low or low plus, those are my options. bit quiet but you know nothing a little bit of volume can't help with and for me it also just keeps my playing a little bit more steady and and i guess confident but there you go that's analog lab let's bounce into my last option now this is a bit of a uh, it's a bit of a funny one because it's not super well known for piano sounds i do like to use it because it's got a couple of special sounds in there but this is basically the cork triton and what i really like about this is the nostalgia. For me, when I think about this keyboard in particular, um, obviously I've got this M1 preset loaded up, sounds like this. Very recognizable sound, but for me, even the pianos, for example, they have this, where is it, this attack piano over here. Not 
not very uh, realistic, I guess, in comparison to the others, but it's got this nostalgia, which I really like, and it just kind of sounds a bit fun, maybe something for a dance track, you know, something a bit more processed. <laughs> Oh, really, really unique loads of attack. And you kind of have on this Triton in particular, you have a couple of variations of this sound. This is called the attack piano. Clearly a lot of attack. If I go into the acoustic piano, which is again, their, their kind of default acoustic. nice it's got a bit of that plasticky feel you know but again in some other types of music this this works quite nicely and for me i just really like you know when i'm reaching for this it's i'm going for nostalgia so i'm not necessarily looking for realistic sounds per se i'm, I'm going more into that out of bounds area i guess but that's pretty much it i, I want to bring up one last piano because it's going to be very different to all of these, and I'd be curious to know what the, the general consensus is of this. And it's one that's very close to my heart, safe to say. But this piano, if I go and open a contact, is this bad boy. This is the piano I've made. My piano at home is the Hyundai G50A. This piano, again, probably sits more in line with the Triton, where I wouldn't use it as a very super realistic piano sound it's a bit out of tune and it's got some really wonky notes at the bottom there's one and there's, there's a couple of funny notes like so it's a very unique sample library but i just thought i'd play it here see what you guys think please feel free to let me know i'd, I'd love to see your opinions on this and yeah let's try it out so this is what it sounds like Awesome. Very uh, characterful piano. You know, you can hear the, the chorus from just it being a bit out of tune and stuff like that. But in a mix, it holds up. You know, it's, it's not uh, crazy out of place. But for me, uh, this was a really unique project to work on because I've never, I had never sampled a, a proper instrument. This is pretty in depth. I think it's like four velocity layers per note or something like that. Yeah, you can see here, there's a couple of things going on on the samples. But for me, it was mainly an experiment to try and, and make a library and, you know, record my home piano. It was just a good project. A little special feature is this reverb. It's a convolution reverb, which is basically almost when you sample the reverb of the room. So I can take the room where the piano is, put a speaker on one end, a microphone on the other, record uh, through the microphone a sine wave coming out of the speaker going... And it basically captures the reverb sound. And so this reverb in particular is the room where the piano sits in. So what I find quite nice is almost adds this air to the piano sounds. Almost adds this, you know, very short reverb, which is quite nice. And what's funny is you can kind of hear that. It's like a little jingly bell in the background. That's actually my dog. May, may he rest in peace. But uh, he was around when I was recording that and clearly I couldn't get uh, a minute of silence <laughs> when you spend a couple of hours recording all of these notes, which is fine. It's nice that he, he kind of lives in this piano library. Again, so we've got this reverb and then we've got this tone. Again, kind of like a little hack to um, get that soft piano sound. Might just pull the reverb back a bit. A 
And if you go the other way, you get the more honky tonk. Very extreme. And then on the other side of extreme. But that's it. If you if you want to check out this piano, I've actually set it on my website and you can find that in the links below. And that's basically it for, for my, my favorite piano sounds of my favorite piano plugin, should I say, of 2023. There's um plenty to choose from and there's plenty I've probably left out as well so please again feel free to let me know in the comments what I've missed I love to find new plugins to talk about so once again thank you very much for stopping by if you enjoyed this video please feel free to like and subscribe and do all that stuff there's plenty of videos on here about production tutorials live streams all that kind of stuff so I'd really appreciate it if you want to check that out once again thanks to everyone who stopped by and who's already subscribed you guys mean the world once again I've been Chris Vella I'll see you on the next one see ya Thank you.